So I'm here today with the Clipper Race Fleets, meeting Simon Johnston, the fleet manager. Uh, the boats have now done 47,000 miles. Simon and I are just going to be going over the boats, looking at how the ropes performed and for wear and tear. And we're going to be taking some of the ropes back to the factory to do some residual testing to see how the UV and the elements have affected our product. I'm here with Simon today looking specifically at, at runner tails and how loops and strops and halyards have performed. So how have you, Simon, found these perform? I mean, the runner tails are interesting because, as I said, they, they ground on awfully hard in the first place and then they, they basically support the belly in the mast up higher, which can, with the boats punching up wind, it will come and go. So the load can come off these very abruptly and really huge loadings. And as far as I'm aware, we haven't broken a single one of these. Um, in the entire race, so you know, really the performance of those has been exemplary. We're not we're not seeing too much wear and tear in the covers here. No, I mean you've got obviously some you know you've got a, a, a cha you know potential chafe point on the block here. You know the covers wear well. This one you can still see it's it's got a little bit of fluffing on it, but it's it's probably got another race in it to be fair. Well, should we wind one of these on and just have a quick yeah? Let's yeah, let's give an idea of what sort of loads we're talking about here. Basically, with these runners, you grind them on pretty much as hard as you can. That's probably about right there. So you can see how tight that is. Occasionally off the back of a big wave, that will go momentarily slack and then back on tight again. Right. So you can imagine how we've got a lot of loading it already. Yeah. And then a shock loading on top, it's yeah. big loadings. I can see some of our um, SK99 Max taking quite a lot of responsibility up in the, the four-stay area. Can you just run us through why why you've chosen to run the Max there? Yeah, sure. Basically, I mean, I have to say, right, so it's a four-stay, it's a pretty long wire with a lot of movement in it. And just to give absolutely maximum articulation possible at this bottom end fixing, we decided to go with the lashing here, which as you can see is a multi-pass lashing between two shackles. And it's worked really well for us. It, if it comes up against the pulpit as the wire moves, it doesn't cause damage because it's soft. It fits inside there nicely. And as I say, it just allows articulation in all directions as much as is needed. And have you changed those at all during the race? Have they been routinely These moved? These have been changed once in Australia, so about a little, a little under halfway round. The, the lashings that came off were absolutely fine though. It's really just a precautionary check and change. Chances are they could have done the whole race. So those ones have done about 30,000 miles since? Yeah, I suspect around about that, yeah. Yeah, and a pretty tough 30,000 miles of that with the North Pacific crossing in there. So, you know, they've done a, done a you know, done, done a lot of work for sure. Yeah, and then you've got quite a lot of other D12 lashings. Yeah, we've got, really yeah, we've got various lashings. We've got, you know, we've got our jack stay lashings. Um, we've got a uh, tack strop for the head sails. We've got safety lashings through the blocks here. So if a block fails, it, you know, it retains the sheaves. Um, yeah, so there's, you know, there's a lot of Dyneema lashings in use on the boat, really. You know, really soft lashings are, you know, very, very useful to us and incredibly strong. And of course, you know, you can remake them at any time, just with the length of line, the appropriate line. I think one of the things we were keen to test was going to be the bob stays. Do you change those at all during the race? No, not routinely. They're inspected for wear and chafe, but uh, they're fairly, you know, fairly low movement line. They're a fixed, they're a fixed piece of line, so they don't chafe or wear a great deal. I'm pretty sure most of these have been the whole way around the world. There may have been the odd one change if it's got caught by something and damaged. So yeah, that'd be an interesting one to test, you know, because they're down in the water, the splices are out in the UV. Um, so that's yes, yeah, certainly an interesting one to look at. So Simon, here at the mast, how have the halyards performed on this race? Well, here for example, we've got six head sail halyards, three each side. These three look like they've done the whole race to me. Yeah. This one looks like it's been replaced. That one's done the whole race and that one's an odd bod, so that's been replaced. But, so that's four out of six there that have done the whole race. The two that have been replaced, most likely just due to chafe, due to either getting around something at the masthead. Don't recall that we've actually broken a halyard as such, but they've actually been physically damaged in use. That, this is probably actually less good than typical across the fleet. I suspect generally on the fleet we've replaced one per boat maybe. This is probably unusually high at two, I should think. And has that been a similar story through the control lines, outhauls, 
reefs? Yeah, it's by and large, we replace ropes when they're physically damaged. Reef lines, we replace a few because occasionally when you're reefing in high winds, they actually get burnt by the sail flogging, the cringles on the sail. Um, they don't break um, other than through physical damage, really. You know, we're, we're well specced, but the line performs well within its spec. So, you know, we're very happy with the performance all around generally. And you've not seen any bending fatigue up around the sheaves? No, no. I mean, it's typically replacements are due to cover failures or damage, you know, you know damage induced failures of the covers. I, we don't really see at all core failures. How has the main sheet coped? Because clearly this is going to have been worked fairly constantly. Yeah, this looks like an original main sheet that's done the whole race to me and it's, well we can see it's in good condition. A little bit fluffy as you'd expect, yeah. but uh, your blocks, um, you know, this will have moved literally countless times over the race with the main being trimmed and there's no real sign of any wear on it anywhere particularly. Probably, probably use that again. <laughs> we won't, but you probably could. Yeah. And then you've got a lot of Dyneema strops. I'm assuming these are sort of for safety reasons across. Yeah, where you see these strops through the centre of block sheaves like this, they are safety strops. So that if you have a failure of a, an individual block, it's either attached to the deck on a hard point, or in this case, because this whole lot moves, you can't do that. So they're attached one to the other, so that if this sh failed, that would catch that sheave and the line to stop it deflecting too far and potentially causing an injury or ch a major change in the set of the sail. And then equally with the, with the traveller set up, that's been fairly constantly moved. There's a little bit of rotation in the cover, but apart from that, it's um, yeah, looking yeah. great. They're looking good. You know, there's a bit of repair here. I mean, the, I suspect most of this rotation is where this isn't moved quite as much as other lines. So it's probably where, in fact, the lines get moved, then coiled onto the winches, and then that comes back down when they're uncoiled again. So it probably is more induced in the handling yeah, of the line where, that, where than people anything have been else. Slipping off the top of the yeah, winch. Yeah, yeah, that it sort puts of thing. The rotation but, in. Yeah, but they're you know they're constantly loaded those lines. All you know there is not there are no pin stops on this traveller, so it's always hanging on one or the other of these traveller lines. Yeah, and I notice you're using a lot of low flexion rings on Dyneema strops across the boat. Is that that a direction of travel? Because we we weren't using seeing as many of those on the last. No, it's more and more, more and more. They're something we're starting to use. You know, they're they're light, compact. They're very versatile. You can use them any any situation. Um, you know, they they really seem to be the way forward. Not just with us, but generally in sailing, lots lots more of those appearing around sailing at large. How is the the rope and the covers coping with the low friction rings? Is it is it better than a block or? Or working just as well? We've seen no difference, no change there. I mean, you might think, given it's moving over a fixed surface rather than a rotating sheave, you'd see more wear, but we haven't seen that at all. Um, it seems to cope with a smaller diameter. Um, if there is a little bit more compression of the line, which gives you a touch more wear, you probably that's probably compensated for by the lack of you know uh, cheeks that can cause wear on the line. So really, no difference. You know, we find them completely interchangeable in pretty much every sense. We've had our wrap-up meet here on all of the clipper boats. The key bit for us is uh, is bringing some of the ropes back to the factory to test because we want to see what the residual brake load that's left. Get the technical department to to break these, and that will help us to talk to end users about what our rope is going to do in terms of lifespan and how our rope performs 47,000 miles down the track. By and large, across the fleet, this rope is still ready to go racing with. I'm here with Paul Dyer, our technical manager, and we've got the, uh, the D12 Max from the four stay, uh, and also the uh, D2 Racing from the running back stays. And we're going to take the core out of the D2 Racing, make up some strops and splice those in, and then put them in the test bed and uh, explode them and see what the residual brake load is left, having done their 47,000 miles. So we're going to unload it. So we've got no load on it now, so we'll just make sure it's reading zero, set it to peak load, slow it down. And up we go until it breaks.
Uh, the original brake load for this when it was new was uh, 10 tonnes. So it's retained about 98% of its as new brake load, despite sailing halfway around the world. Zero three tons, so that's lost about 20% of its brake load, but it has gone all the way around the world. And it's uh, this is an application where the rope will be loaded and then unloaded repeatedly, so it'll have undergone uh, fatigue uh, actions, unlike the four-stage drop, which should stay under load the whole time. I'd say that's a pretty good result. Okay, so in summary, what we've done is taken the core out of the D2 racing built some straps which Paul has tested to destruction. So Paul, have you ended up with what you expected? Uh, yes, I think we have. The, uh, the four-stage strop broke at 9.8 tonnes, which is uh, about 98% of its new strength, which is what you'd expect. It's been in an application under constant load, and that's good for Dyneema. So uh, it's been like that since Sydney. It's a pretty good result. This rope, this one is in an application where the load comes on and off, yeah. so you'd expect it to lose more strength because it's, there's other fatigue mechanisms happening. It's gone all the way around the world, 47,000 miles, still got 80% of its original strength. That's a pretty good result. For most people, that's a lifetime of sailing. <laughs>